During electrolysis of brine, we find that when we use graphite electrodes, the potential between sodium ions and hydrogen ions of the cathode is too high to be overcome, so that hydrogen ions are preferentially discharged rather than sodium ions. Let us review the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. We always remember that anode is our site for oxidation. Here we have chloride ions and hydroxide ions. Chloride ions are provided by the sodium chloride. Hydroxide ions are provided by water. The small value at the anode indicates that this is the strongest reducing agent. A strong reducing agent is most easily oxidized. We would have expected then that hydroxide ions should be oxidized, but because of the effect of concentration, then chloride ions are preferentially discharged, and therefore chloride ions are discharged at the anode. This happens because the potential between chloride ions and hydroxide ions is small. When you subtract positive 0 0.40 volts from positive 1.36 volts, the difference comes to about um, positive, uh, comes to about 0 0.96 volts. And that's a small value. And therefore, the potential is overcome and chloride ions are preferentially discharged. When we get to the cathode, remembering again that cathode is a site for reduction, we have sodium ions and hydrogen ions. In this case, at the, at the cathode, we have that the larger value represents the stronger oxidizing agent. A strong oxidizing agent is most easily reduced. Applying the concept of the anode, we could have said that sodium ions are preferentially discharged because of their high concentration. <coughs> However, this does not occur because the potential between sodium ions and hydrogen ions is too high. That means that hydrogen ions will then be discharged rather than sodium ions. And so, at the cathode, hydrogen ions are discharged. Therefore, we find that chloride ions are oxidized to form chlorine gas and two electrons. The two electrons are transferred to the cathode where they are gained by hydrogen ions to reduce them to hydrogen gas. Therefore, in order for us to then be able to discharge sodium ions, we can employ the use of mercury electrode, which has very low resistance. With this, we are able to overcome the potential between sodium ions and hydrogen ions. This concept is applied in the mercury cell for the manufacture of sodium hydroxide. The objective here is to see the discharge of sodium ions instead of hydrogen ions at the cathode. Let us look at the mercury cell. The mercury cell has two main compartments, an upper compartment that has brine and a lower compartment that has other features that we shall discuss shortly. In the upper compartment, we have brine being the electrolyte. There's a graphite anode, and we have a moving uh, cell of mercury forming the cathode. As the mercury is pumped, it flows through this cell. There is no separation between the mercury and brine. Mercury has a high density and therefore remains below. Brine with a lower density than mercury floats on the mercury and therefore the separation between mercury and brine is just their difference in density. This flow of mercury is what enables brine 
to flow in from one end and flow out through the other end. Later, we shall talk about the reason as to why brine has to be kept flowing for this cell to work. The lower compartment, as we've said, has uh, water, and that one, whose reason we shall review a little later during this talk. Let us see the working of this mercury cell. Chloride ions are oxidized at the anode. In this oxidation process, we see that there is production of chlorine gas and also two electrons. Chlorine gas bubbles through the brine and is collected in the upper compartment from where it can be topped for various uses. The two electrons move from the, an from the anode through the external circuit and are introduced into the mercury cathode. Remember, the cathode is our site for a reduction. Sodium ions this time are discharged. This is because the mercury electrode overcomes the potential between sodium ions and the hydrogen ions that are present in brine. The sodium ions gain the two electrons that are released from the anode and we form sodium atoms. Sodium atoms are in liquid state and mercury is hot and is liquid. So sodium ion, sodium atoms sorry, dissolve in mercury to form sodium amalgam. Sodium amalgam is not a compound. Sodium amalgam is just sodium that is dissolved in mercury. The sodium amalgam moves to the lower compartment. In this lower compartment, water is let in. Water has a role here, that being the breaking down of sodium amalgam. In our fourth step then, sodium amalgam is broken down at these grids. The grids may be made of steel or graphite. Let us consider that they are made of steel in this case. It doesn't bring any difference in reaction. Sodium amalgam is broken down by water to form three products. We have sodium hydroxide, mercury and hydrogen gas. Mercury has been regenerated from sodium amalgam. Mercury having a higher density is going to sink through the water and get back to the cell where it flows again as our cathode. Hydrogen gas has lower density. It bubbles through the water, up the water and is released at the top. Hydrogen is tapped for various uses. In organic chemistry, we learned that there is the process of hydrogenation. Alkynes and alkenes are hydrogenated to form alkanes. The mercury cell has the sole purpose of producing sodium hydroxide and therefore the sodium hydroxide in the cell is collected. It moves into a container where we have the sodium hydroxide solution. The sodium hydroxide collected through this method is not pure. It is only 50% pure, we can say, the other percentage being water. It can be made, or can be further purified by heating the solution to saturation and crystallizing the sodium hydroxide, or else simply evaporating all the water to have flakes of sodium hydroxide. At the onset, we said that there's a reason why we have to keep the brine flowing. Let us review that. In solution, brine consists, brine is a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. So we will have sodium ions and chloride ions, but hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are present due 
to the fact that sodium, sodium chloride is dissolved in water. In this process, sodium ions and chloride ions are being discharged. That means that their concentration in solution decreases. So as we lose the sodium ions and chloride ions, we are left with a very low concentration of those two ions. And that means that hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are in higher concentration. For that, by virtue of the position in the electrochemical series, then hydrogen ions will be discharged at the cathode and hydroxide ions instead will be discharged at the anode. To prevent this, um, the brine has to be kept flowing so that we maintain a high concentration of sodium ions and chloride ions to ensure that only these two are discharged. This is the working of the mercury cell. This has been your presenter, Peter and Dangle.